Hi, this is Croix Rouge, which in French means Red Cross. It's a kit by Michael Canadis and team at the Carmel Dahl Shop and Gorvé and Dahl Museum. It's basically a 1900s, probably World War I or a little bit earlier, um, nurse's uniform that they would have worn in the field. And it's just a beautiful costume. It's comprised of this unlined but bound edged cloak, this really lovely blue and white uh, stripe dress with white collar and white cuffs, and this pinafore apron. It's very, very simple. Uh, one thing I did um, fail to mention is her headdress, her bonnet. Um, she's not wearing a wig right now because it just, it needs to be close fitting. And this was really about keeping your hair um, covered and being hygienic at this time. Uh, but I think this is just a really lovely, lovely project. And I think you're going to enjoy it. And hopefully uh, you'll enjoy the video and the instructions. And also they didn't forget um, the little dogs. I think that this might be Bijou, I believe. Uh, the dogs in the trenches of World War I actually also wore um, uniforms so they could be identified as Red Cross um, service animals. So I hope that you enjoy this. It was a real pleasure uh, doing the instructions for such a wonderful project. Thank you. So we're starting on this dress, which is a really very simple and lovely design. I think that you could probably even adapt this um, once you have the pattern to some other sort of like day dresses or house dresses for Fanny and friends. Um, it's just really very, very simple. It's made up of um, several different pieces and we're gonna start with the bodice. Uh, the bodice is going to be a front and a back. You're gonna cut two of the back and you cut the front on a fold. And just, um, a little, I don't know if you guys probably already might have a, a way of working this way with stripes, but what I like to do is I establish what the stripe is on the pattern piece, let's say on my front piece, and then I use that on my back piece to basically mark where those stripes should be so we get a really good match. And you can see that here. If I sort of drag this down, you're going to get a, a nice match at that shoulder seam. Sometimes it doesn't work if the stripes are different sort of widths and things, but um, in this case, I think it's going to be good. So what we're going to do, let me get these pattern pieces out of the way. We are going to turn over the back edge and make sure you've got a mirrored back edge by approximately an eighth of an inch. And then we're gonna turn it over again, approximately three eighths of an inch. And then we're going to top stitch that down. So you're going to basically have two finished backs, again, mirrored pieces, and then we're going to sew them together at the shoulders. We're going to pink that seam uh, allowance and we're going to press that open. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to prepare our collar pieces. Now you're going to have, this is your collar pattern. You're going to cut four of these. You're going to need two mirrored sets. So sort of imagine this is the front of your dress. You're going to have two sides to it, obviously. Well, not obviously, but you're gonna have two sides. So we're going to sew this together. You're going to carefully trim your seams and clip your corners because you wanna have nice sharp corners like this sample here. And you're gonna turn them inside out and then you're gonna top stitch you can really top stitch uh, this closed if you want, but you're gonna top stitch on all three sides and again, around the front, uh, around the top rather. Uh, this will be a raw edge, that's fine because you're going to enclose that in your binding strip. And your binding strip preparation is gonna be very simple. I think you've probably seen this on a couple of videos. You're going to gently curve it and you might wanna spray it just to give it a little bit more memory. You know, this has a little bit of memory to it. Um, and the reason why you're doing this is you want to try to conform to that neckline opening. So I'm going to step away and go to my <laughs> trusty machine. Now first, I'm going to measure, if I can find my ruler. I'm going to measure and make sure that that's a 3 8 because it doesn't look like a 3 8 to me. And as I said, I am not one for measuring, which I probably should be. So I'm going to confirm that. Let's just say, eh, 
So it could be a little bit more. So you know what's great about this cotton is that all you have to do if you're using one of these dry irons is just give it a little spray with your handy spritz bottle that's available at the Carmel Doll Shop Boutique. And then you just can check your measurement and re-iron it. And that is three eighths exactly. So I will do this side. I will finish uh, this side. I'll finish this side. I'll seam the shoulders and I will sew together the collar and show you the next step. So we've made our collars. We had uh, two sets of collars that we need to make. We've sewn them around, we've turned them inside out, we've clipped our seams, and we've top stitched them. Don't look too closely at my top stitching. Oh, it's just really a shame um, when I look at the beautiful work that uh, Leo in the Carmel Beauty Department has turned out. He just is a master at the machine and I really, I'm just so inspired by him. But what we're going to do is we're going to place the collar pieces. We're going to baste around the neckline. And then this little strip here, uh, this bias strip, it's uh, in one of your pattern pieces. We have turned over an eighth of an inch on one of the long edges. And then we have very sort of gently you know, you'll have seen this in a couple of other different videos, sort of gently uh, ironed it into a gentle curve because we want it to sort of follow that, the curve of the neckline. Um, after we've done that, what I'm going to do, after I've basted, I'm going to find the center. I'm going to match the center with the center here, and then I'm going to pin this binding around and sew it down with an eighth inch seam allowance. So one thing just to say is that this is not going to be a, a, a faced neckline. It's going to be sort of like a standing collar um, effect. So what we're basically going to be doing is we're binding, but it's going to, you know, it's better to show in the finished. It's basically going to stand up. You're going to have this little like upright collar, which is really wonderful. I mean, just look at how wonderful those that top stitching is. Well, we can aspire. Um, so I will base this down. I'll take that um, back and show you what our next step, which, which will be with the sleeves. Uh, we've already started the sleeve, so that'll be in a good place. And then we're going to be basically very close to being finished with the bodice piece. And then I'll show you the waistband. Here's our bodice front and collar. Uh, so basically, we had pinned our collar in place. I think if you look at this collar front, in the sample, it has much more of a spread to it. And so I think that there, in your pattern, you may see a slight adjustment where there's more of an angle um, on that front piece. Right now, it's basically uh, squared off. But I think that you know, it might be a little bit more angled. So if it's like this, it's fine. If it's angled back, it's fine too. Um, it's just whatever the final adjustment is on the pattern uh, before it goes into um, production. So then we've taken the curved um, bias strip. We've um, pinned it around the neckline. We've left about a quarter of an inch on either of the back openings. And then we've turned it to the inside and it's a very sort of narrow bias strip. So if you're sewing this, I would say probably sew your collar to your neckline with a scant, um, you know, maybe it's a scant quarter of an inch, maybe it's like three sixteenths. Um, and, you know, you just really want to make sure that you've got that. Um, uh, you're capturing the edge of the collar, the, the, the neckline of the blouse, the edge of the collar and this. And then you're basically turning it over and you're slip stitching it in place all the way around. Uh, I think it's a really sort of a charming little, um, a charming little feature for this. And uh, also these have been top stitched, just so you know, before they were installed <laughs> or applied, <laughs> installed. That's funny. So uh, we're going to move on to the sleeves now and I'm gonna show you um, two things. Uh, we've already prepared our sleeves because that's really the next step here. And the sleeve is really interesting. 
Um, the cuff itself, you're going to be putting your cuffs together, just seaming them along that top, the pointed top of the cuff line. You're not doing anything to the bottom or the sides because those are gonna be sewn together or enclosed. So then what we're going to do, and I think uh, this does a good job of explaining that, if you imagine this is your front of your sleeve and this is your back, we're actually going to sew this right side to wrong side of the sleeve. So in other words, this is the right side of the cuff, this is the wrong side of the sleeve, they're going together. We're stitching that across, we're pinking it, we're pressing it open, and then we're running a small overcast, not small overcast, overstitch or top stitch along the, um, that seam or below that seam rather. And that just really helps it to lie nice and flat. And then what we're doing is we're flipping the collar from the back, the, the, the back to the front and we're pressing it on that line. So you see how ni nice that little, that little uh, top stitch is, it makes it ni lie nice and flat. And then we're going to basically then be treating the cuff and the sleeve as one piece. So this will be left loose because it just basically wraps around the sleeve and it's open. And our next step will be to run two rows of gathering stitches within our seam allowance on the sleeve cap. I wouldn't go all the way edge to edge, maybe stop short half an inch on either side. And then with our blouse piece, we're going to be matching center to center. So, you know, the, the best way of finding a center is by folding it in half and maybe marking it if you need to. We're gonna be finding our center to center, so right sides together. We're gonna pin that in place. And then we're going to match our ends together. You know, don't worry about matching um, your stripes at this point because this sleeve is gonna have a little fullness and it's just gonna pull up nicely. And so basically that's what we're working with. Just sort of get our th gathering threads out of the way. So, the, you know, the way I like to do this is basic, basically by finding the center and then pinning both sides just so I have something to work with and then very gently taking your two gathering threads and just pulling them very gently up so they will fit the arm opening. And I think in this case, you don't have to tie these off or do anything. I mean, it's such a small piece. Um, you know, one thing I, I failed to mention, and I know I keep harping on how I'm not a machine sewer, but this, um, this neckline opening is just so small. Um, and I did not want to use the machine on, in terms of sewing the, the bias um, strip over the collar. I did that by hand because I just have more control. You know, that's just me. I say, if you, again, if you feel really proficient working in tight spaces with your machine, I think it's you know, go for it. But as I have <laughs> repeatedly said, I don't feel that way and I don't feel comfortable. So um, I did it by hand using a running back, back stitch for strength. So we're going to continue to pin um, this and we'll do the next side. And then we're going to sew it together with a scant quarter inch seam allowance. We're going to, um, you know, you could either trim and overcast. I'll probably trim and overcast rather than pinking uh, because the armhole tends to get a lot of uh, wear and movement. Um, and then uh, we're going to um, we're going to sew our side seams together, basically. And I'll show that to you. But it's a very very traditional and sort of standard way of sewing a side side seam together by matching the ends of our cuffs, our underarm seam, uh, underarm seam, and the bottom of our bodice. And it looks like maybe we're going to have some nice matching here, which isn't really intentional, but it's always nice when that happens. Um, and then we're going to pink and press open that seam, turn it inside out, and then we're going to be ready to um, move on to the waistband application. So I will go and get that started and come back and show you how to apply the waistband.
So we've started to prepare our waistband and the bottom of our bodice for attachment. On one piece of the waistband, we have folded and pressed back a quarter of an inch seam allowance. We've also run two rows of gathering stitches on the bottom of the bodice within our seam allowance. And then what I've done is I found the center of the waistband I found the center of the bodice and I have lined those and I've aligned the folded edge of the waistband with the finished back of the, of the bodice. And now I'm basically gently pulling up the gathering stitches to pull in that fullness. Sometimes it's a little tricky to find your gathering stitches. So I need to, or which stitches to rather, which threads to pull. So I'm going to just separate them a little bit. And then we're just very gently pulling up that gathering. You just want to make sure that you sort of evenly distribute your gathers across. And then once you've done that, once you've done that, you're going to align your raw edge of the waistband with the raw edge of the bottom of the blouse or the bodice rather. And we're going to pin that across. And at this point, I think you can probably get rid of your, your threads. You don't need to tie these off. I'm just going to keep them long until you don't need them anymore. And sometimes what I like to do is I like to just gently press my gathers so when I do seam them together it's a nice flat seam and then we're going to sew this I'm just gonna step away and sew it quickly so we've sewn that across the bottom and one thing I did not mention to you is that we this is the front waistband there's two parts of this waistband. There's the front and there is the back or the lining. So, you know, when you cut this waistband, you might just want to think, you know, be intentional with how you cut it and how you sew it. You see how um, that line of blue is still there? I mean, for the most part, I have to press it out, but that line of blue is still there. That's kind of like a nice little detail that you might want to keep. So really the idea behind this is that you're going to be sewing your blouse to the top of the waistband. And then our skirt, which we're gonna move on to next, is going to be, of course it's upside down, is going to be gathered. The top of the skirt will be gathered once it's seamed and finished in the back. And we're gonna be doing the same thing. We're going to be gathering it and attaching it to the waistband bottom. So I'm going to move on to that step. And you know, you don't really need to trim this seam if, unless you just want to neaten it up. I think it's probably fine. What you really want to do, and I'm going to bring my handy little scrap bowl over here. So you just want to get all your little hanging threads off and maybe just clip the ends off of here. And just, you know, neaten it up. You don't have to pink it because this, all of this is going to be enclosed when you attach the back of the waistband. And then you probably just want to give it a nice press. Okay. So that is the, that's the first step of your waistband. And then we're going to move on to preparing the skirt. So we can basically, this other piece of the waistband, you don't really need to start anything with it, but what we are going to be doing, and I could just maybe show you that now, is we're going to be turning in our seam allowances on all four sides by a quarter of an inch. And the idea here is that this is going to be, basically, when your skirt's attached, you're going to be laying it on top, aligning your edges and the top and the bottom once it's all the skirt's been put on. And you're going to slip stitch it over your first waistband. 
you know, you'll be slip stitching it to this finished seam. And then we're going to top stitch it, as you can see here in the sample garment, we're gonna to be top stitching it across. So that is our next step. I also decided that um, I do think that this pattern will be adjusted when it, before it goes out to you, but I do think I'm going to turn back this collar. So it's a little bit more of a spread collar because I like that and I think that will be adjusted in, again, in the pattern before you get it, but it's going to be more of sort of a, an open collar. So it's got a little bit more of a opening here or rather a spread, you know, and you won't have to worry about doing that because again, your pattern will be adjusted. So I'm going to move on to the, I'm gonna move on to the skirt. Uh, the first thing we're going to do with the skirt is we are going to sew it together and I'm gonna to go to my, I'm gonna to go to my pattern here and just read. Um, we're gonna sew it together with a quarter inch seam allowance and we're gonna to stop to about approximately two and three quarters from the top edge of the skirt. We're going to then um, open that, uh, steam that seam open and we're going to create a faux placket. And what I mean by that is that we're going to turn over and top stitch when you're looking at the garment, the right side of that. And we're going to turn over and top stitch the left hand side. But before we do that, um, let me see, before we do that, we're gonna make a tiny little tuck here. So we're basically going to pull it over and we're going to be stitching down and over. So, you know, you can do this first or you can wait until you're, you're ready to do it. But Basically, you're going to be stitching down, top stitching down, and then top stitching over and creating that little faux placket at the bottom. It's just a little tuck, and I'll show you that when we get to that stage. Well, you're gonna hear my little dog in the background protecting the house. So this is what I was talking about. We've seamed the back of the skirt together, stop two and three quarters of an inch from the top, and not, not the cleanest top stitching, I'm afraid, but um, we've turned over our seam allowance on the back of the right-hand side as you're looking at the skirt, and then we have taken a little bit of a tuck here, probably about a quarter of an inch tuck, and we've turned it all the way over to the top, and then we're going to top stitch we're gonna to top stitch and I'll, I'm gonna repin this so I don't run over all these needles, but we're going to top stitch this only on this side, keeping this open all the way down, and then we're going to go across. So I'll show it to you again on the sample. So you have this sort of like faux placket here. Well, it's a, it's a placket, it's not really faux, but I think you know what I mean. Um, so we're going to do that. I'm gonna make sure that I again, um, pin this uh, more carefully and make sure that I am not running over any um, any pin, any pins. Um, so we're going to do that. And then the next thing we're going to do, and we'll give that a good press just to make sure it lies nice and flat. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to run um, two rows of gathering stitches across the top of the skirt within the quarter inch seam allowance. Very similar to uh, what we did at the bottom of the bodice. We're going to find our our center of the skirt, and we're gonna mark that. I'm not gonna mark it now, but I'll mark it after I've done the gathering. And then we're gonna do the same thing that we had done before. We're going to match our center of our waistband, which again, we can find very easily by turning this and giving it a little marking with a pin. So that's our center, it's even a you can see the crease marking our center. And then we're going to align that with the center of our skirt with right sides together and with our ends together, we're going to sew that gathering in place. We're gonna pull it up to fit and we're going to sew the skirt, the bottom of the skirt, uh, <laughs> the bottom of the blouse waistband to the top of the skirt, the gathered skirt. And we're gonna treat it very much in the same way. We're gonna trim it. We're gonna press our seam allowance towards the waistband. And then I'm gonna show you our next step. It's 
So I want to show you what this will look like before we've applied the inner waistband. We've, uh, again, we've attached it to the top. We've gathered and attached the skirt to the bottom. We've cleaned up that seam allowance, so we've pressed the seam towards the waistband. And there you could see the little faux placket. I'm not going to add the, um, the closures yet because there's gonna be a little bit more bulk here um, when we add our inner waistband, but I just really wanted to try it on her um, primarily for the hem. Um, I think that, you know, as one of the earlier, vis uh, earlier videos on Fanny and Flora, um, this is the time when skirts were going up. And I think that uh, if you look at this sample, it's quite a deep hem that's been um, not top stitched, actually. It's been, uh, there's a running hem stitch here, which is really kind of nice. So we're gonna do a running hem stitch, but it's quite a deep hem. So I think that in the instructions, we say to um, turn it over approximately an eighth of an inch on the bottom and then turn it over again at one and three quarters inches. So let's just see, you know, that's about an eighth. Let's just see where that comes up on her. Let's use our handy dandy measuring tool. It actually might be too much, but let's see. Yeah, it's probably about right. You know, this would be something that would be it would not be a long skirt because of the practicality. I think I might, I might go one and a half instead though, because I feel like it might be a little bit too much. Yeah, that feels about right. So that's about an eighth and one and a half. You could see this is a little bit longer, but um, you know, you could even make it an inch if you want. All of these, the sample garment's always a little bit different than when you start to work with the pattern. Um, so I'm gonna say I will give her an inch, um, an inch hem. And let's see how that falls. Again, you know, you've gotta try this on your doll and you've gotta see how it fits and if you're, you're happy with it. So I actually think that feels good to me. I mean, really in the 1915s, teens, Skirts start to get shorter and shorter, um, but this is a nurse's uniform. It probably can have a little bit more um, modesty to it. So I'm going to move on then. I just want to check that hem quickly. And I got a new pair of arms from the Carmel doll shop, which was wonderful. And I installed them myself. They were very easy to put on, but I just want to be gentle with them. So we're gonna set her aside. I just wanna show you what we'll be doing with the waistband. It probably would make more sense to do this when it's inside out. Yeah, that makes more sense. So you could actually see it. So what we've done, if I can find that waistband that we've already pre-pressed. Again, we've pressed the seam allowance on all four sides. So. In this case, you know what I think I'm gonna do? I'm going to, I've already pressed it at the top. I think I'm gonna to align the top because as I'm looking at this, just eyeballing it, I think that I'm probably gonna need a little bit more than that seam allowance I pressed over on the bottom. And by that, I mean, what we're trying to do here is we're encapsulating by hand, this is gonna be a slip stitch. We're encapsulating by hand the, the waistband. Uh, the outer waistband with the inner waistband. So I just am like, I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, okay, it looks like we're probably going to need a little bit more on the bottom. You see how it falls short? So I would say press the top and the sides over first, and then you're going to be able to adjust how much you actually have covering the bottom. And that looks like it's a little bit less than, um, than that quarter inch seam allowance. So what I would do is I would attach it or slip stitch it all the way across the top. So you've got it attached and I'm just gonna pin it for now. You see it's gonna 
give you this nice clean finish on the inside. I'm going to just do that all the way across. Just pin it in place. You can even pin it if you want, just pin it very well. And then I'm going to flip it and I'm gonna determine, this will be easier if you press out this crease that <laughs> I told you to put in there. I'm gonna determine how much I need to turn over and it looks like it's about an eighth of an inch to successfully cover that bottom seam. Again, this is not in your pattern. This is just something you're going to have to, you know, um, to look at with your particular doll and the way that, you know, how, mu how much you've sewn and etc. But I think that that's pretty much the, the, the effect that we're going for. So that should just basically cover, go from the top seam to the bottom seam and cover both of those seams. I'm actually going to press this out if my iron's on because I want to not be hampered by that crease that I put in there. I'm gonna press that out so I have a little bit more leeway in terms of working with it. And I'm going to slip stitch it along this this top seam. So it's nice and stable. I'm probably gonna put another pin or two here and then I'll figure out what the turnover is at the bottom. And then that will all be slip stitched in place. And then what we're going to do, and I'll show you on the sample garment, we're going to top stitch on all four sides. So you're basically gonna be top stitching below your seam all the way across and it's great that this is a stripe because it helps you to sort of like guide your top stitching in a, in a, in a nice clean way and um, again on all four sides and then I'm going to do the hem. So I think um, that's pretty much, oh actually that's not all because we've got our two snaps. So then you're going to fit it to your doll again and then I think the next thing that you're going to do once you've gotten um, your, your hem, your snaps in position because make sure she's wearing also all of her underwear when you put this on just so you have a good fit. We're going to be doing these tiny little crosses with three strands of your embroidery floss. And it's basically just a very simple little cross stitch. What I like to do, and I'm gonna show you on the, on the cuff here, is I like to use the Frixion and I just like to sort of draw that cross on and how, you know, it's your decision how large you want it to be. There's no set measurement, but I will just draw the cross on and just see, you know, do I like that position? Do I like the size? Um, I sort of do. So I think I will then do it on the other side. And this is a good opportunity for you just to see if they're the same size, because you do want those to be uniform. You know, at least visually, you can measure everything. You can always measure. And if you didn't like it, you can always just press it out. And then when I turn over the, again, this is going to be corrected in the pattern, but when I turn over the collar, I'm going to do another cross here. I'm probably at a slight angle, I would think. And then we are pretty much done with our, um, our nurse's dress. And I will bring it back and show you the finished um, product. And then we're going to move on to the bib apron. Well, her dress is finished. It's very, very simple, as I said. I think it would make a really lovely little day dress for her as well, maybe with uh, some different fabrics or a different tr cuff treatment or a different shape cuff. But um, we've embroidered the crosses on the collar and on the cuffs. And the last thing I need to do is put in the snaps. And I don't know about you, but I don't like putting in snaps. So I always leave it to the very end. But um, this is uh, this is her dress. I really um, love this design. And now we're gonna get started on her apron, which is a very, very simple, I'm almost like, it's almost like a pinafore, but it's a uh, one piece um, bib front and shoulder straps and a waistband and a front skirt. Very, very simple. So we're going to start off with our bib front and shoulder straps. And um, you're going to cut this identically, two pieces, and then you're going to seam them together, I'm just pinning them, um, seam them together 
on the inside curve all the way around. You're going to leave these two edges open or these two ends open, and then you're going to seam them here and also leave this end open. And then you're going to turn it inside out and give it a good press. The next um, piece that you're going to need is the waistband, and there are two waistbands very similar to the dress that we just made. There's going to be an outside waistband. So basically think of it as a lined waistband, but what's so great about this design that um, the, the Carmel team came up with, or the Grovian team came up with, is that this, once this is turned inside out, this is going to be encapsulated in that waistband. So you have a really nice clean finish. And what's even better is that before you do that, you're going to bring this shoulder strap down and you're going to encapsulate it all together in the same, uh, in the same seam here. And then I'll show you how we're going to prepare the skirt. Um, very, very simple. It's basically a rectangular piece of fabric that has been um, hemmed and top stitched on the two short ends and then hemmed at the bottom um, and top stitched. So very simple, simple uh, button and loop closure. And then this really great little um, silk cross that we're going to be doing together. And I can show you how that comes together. So let's get started. I'm going to finish my pinning and then I will show you the next step after this piece has been sewn and turned inside out. When you do um, turn this inside out, just make sure that you, uh, before you do rather, make sure that you clip your seams, but you, uh, that you trim your seams, but that you also clip wherever there's a curve so it's a nice smooth curve. Um, I don't think you really need to clip on the outside here, but you know, maybe like one or three, um, one to three clips might be good just to ease it a little bit. So I will go off and do that and come back and show you what the next step is with the waistband. So we've turned the bib and the shoulder straps inside out, we've pressed them. And now what we're doing is we're applying them to the waistband. And how we do that is we find the center of the waistband and we find the center of the bib and we pin it together at that point. And then working our way out, we pin again, just making sure that we're keeping our edges flush. And then we're creating these little shoulder straps in a very, this is just such a nice little design. You can see how those form the shoulder straps. Well, I think that's, that's great. You just want to make sure that when you pin them, that you pin them as I'm showing you, you know, um, same side, the same side of this just wraps around and comes out. You're not twisting it like this because that's not, it's going to give you a twisted, um, a twisted shoulder strap and you're not going to be happy with that it's just not going to fit well so just make sure that the same the same face comes around and wraps so it sits right next to that bib front and you want to make sure that it's a nice snug fit there so now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking the other finding the center of the other waistband which is identical in size we're going to be pinning it and we're just going to be sewing it along the top and then we can actually set it aside while we work on our skirt and again the skirt's going to be very simple um, it's going to be hemmed on the short ends and then hemmed on the bottom and gathered on the top and we'll show you how that gets put together in our next step so we have hemmed the short ends and top stitch them and we have hem the, the hem and top stitch that and now what we're going to do is we're going to attach the front waistband to our um, to our skirt so one thing i just wanted to show you is that in this case we're going to start a quarter of an inch away from we're going to position our hemmed edge a quarter of an inch away from our raw edge of our waistband. And I'm going to tell you why we're doing that. So we're going to do that on both sides. And then just like with the bodice and with the skirt, we're going to carefully draw up 
our gathers and distribute them evenly. Okay, again, no need to tie these off. You just want to get them where you want them to be. And we'll spend a little bit more time with that before we sew. But the idea here is that, and you're going to do that on the other side, the idea is that you're basically going to be sewing this, the front of this waistband, to the top of the skirt. And then what you're going to do is you're going to turn it over. Remember we said to leave that quarter inch seam allowance? And we're going to close it up by a quarter of an inch. Then we're going to turn it inside out. So basically we're in... <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> the dog is just on super patrol today. Um, so basically we're encapsulating the, very much like we did the waistband, but in a slightly different method, we're encapsulating the gathered portion of this. And I can share with you what that looks like when we're done. Again, what I sort of like to do, and you can always adjust it and do whatever you want, but I like to give a little press to the top of my gathers just so I can have a nice flat seam area. So I'm going to gather this side. I'm going to sew them together. I'm going to sew the ends together. And before I flip it, I'll show you what that looks like. So we've put together our apron. Instead of slip stitching the back of it, we just top stitched it across the, the bottom of this, above the, the seam. And we're going to close it with a button and a thread loop. But first I'm gonna show you how to make this little um, silk cross here. It's very, very simple. You're going to be cutting a, a strip of fabric, and let's just say it's you know 10 or 12 inches long by three quarters. You're going to be ironing it in thirds. So the, you're going to iron down a quarter, then you're going to flip up approximately a quarter. It doesn't really matter. You just really want the, the width of it to be a quarter. So let's just see. Let's measure that with our little measuring. Yep. It's about a quarter of an inch. You don't need very much of this, um, but you will see that, um, you know, you can do some other things with it. You could make some little crosses for a satchel or um, something else that she might wear. Uh, her cape is pretty much unadorned, but she will have a, um, a cap that will have a, um, I think it's an embroidered cross on it. But you know, if you want to do that, um, if you want to do that in this, you could do that as well. It might be a little chunky, but it might be very pretty too. Uh, that's the last thing we're going to be looking at. So you're going to measure this out, and let me just look at my instructions. You're going to be measuring these out an inch and three eighths, so two strips an inch and three eighths long. So I'm just going to start in from a little bit. The friction. There's my mark. Three eighths. It's kind of important that you have these as um, precise as possible because we want the cross to be you know, lovely and symmetrical. So that's one. And then you've got another at an inch and three eighths. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to fold over one end by approximately an eighth of an inch. Give that a little press. And then we're going to fold over the other end and you're going to probably have some little fraying. You just trim it away. No big deal. And then we're going to fold over the other end by approximately an eighth of an inch. Okay. And you can even give this a little spritz if you want to, just to keep it nice and sharp. You know, sometimes I like to do it from both sides just to give it a little bit of extra crispness Whoop. and if you if your pressing pops out that's the joy of silk you can press it back okay so that's going to be our vertical could be our vertical or our our, our um, horizontal portion of the cross so what we're going to do is we're going to again find our center we always just want to make sure we're finding our center 
And I'm going to make a little bit of a Frixion mark there because we're going to iron this anyway. There's our center. You know, visually that doesn't really look like the center, does it? But let's see. Yeah, it's probably a little bit farther over. There we go. So we're going to find approximately where we want to start the cross. And I think that looks like a good place. You know, this is just something that you're going to no set way of doing it. Let's measure that and see what that is. It's about a quarter of an inch. And then we're going to turn under the other end. We're going to make sure that it's it's relatively <laughs> vertical. So what makes this a little bit challenging is that silk is also a little slippery. There we go. Well, let's, uh, let's take a look at it. So you're going to be able to clean up. When you tack this down along the sides, you're going to be able to clean up and push in those little uh, raw bits that you see there. But I think that looks pretty pretty good. And then we're going to do the same with our other cross piece. Let's see here. And once that's pressed, we're going to put it across. So you have this beautiful red cross. So let me um, get that going and finished. And then we will move on to this beautiful cape that is probably one of the simplest things you're going to make with this costume. Very, very, very simple. Or with this ensemble, rather. It is one piece of fabric, two darts, and we're going to bind the bottom. We're gonna bind the sides. And this is really an interesting way of doing it. Um, I think I learn something new every day but we're gonna bind the sides in this very interesting way. And then um, we're going to put on a collar and there's no facing here. The collar is put on very much like the cuffs were on the dress. It's right, uh, let me see, it's wrong side to right side um, when you're sewing. So, oh rather, hmm, let me see, right side to right side. No, right side to wrong side. <laughs> I'll get it eventually. It's right side to wrong side. And then you flip it over and you have this beautiful finished edge. Just so simple, and this is such a beautiful, beautiful, I think it's a flannel, wool flannel maybe, but it's just, um, it's just really gorgeous and it has a very simple closure. So that is the next thing we're gonna be doing, and I will come back and show you the beginning steps. We're going to start our cape. I'm doing a couple of things here just to show you, make the best of our time. Uh, we, it's just one piece, the two shoulder darts, we sew those, we press them. And then what we're going to do, and I don't know if you've actually learned this trick, but I think it's a great one. If you have these long bias strips and you have to sort of miter them together or join them together. Um, I was at the Denise BC Blue Danube workshop and imagine this is like, hmm, let's see how, oh, I don't think I need this much. So I'm gonna cut off a little bit and show you this trick because I think it's great. I used to do this crazy thing where I would actually angle both sides and I piece them together and it's just so time consuming. Um, Denise taught this great technique where basically you are just seaming these together. Now I wanna make sure that I show this to you correctly. Let's see here, no one probably even confusing myself, it's horrible. Okay, so what you're basically doing is you're putting, to, putting them together uh, at right angles you're letting a little edge hang over and then you're going to seam it on a diagonal and when you've done that you trim that seam and you've got this really perfect uh join here which i'll show you here i mean it just saves so much trouble from actually trying to piece them which is just the worst thing and so um and so inane to do it that way but uh what we're then going to do is we're going to press back or press in rather, our seam allowance along one straight edge of this long bias piece. And this bias piece is going to be uh, facing our hemline, the bottom of the cape. I'm just gonna do that all the way around. And then, I'm 
be a couple of things on this just to show you. We're going to place the raw edges right side to right side. Uh, you can hear my dryer going off. Right side to right side. And we're going to stitch this all the way around. You can have a little bit hanging over. Don't worry about this because on the next step, you're going to be hiding these edges. But we're going to be stitching this all the way around. And then we're gonna turn it under and I'll show you on the finished piece. We're gonna turn that under and we're gonna have just a little sliver of the wool above that fold. Uh, we're going to then uh, slip stitch with small stitches, slip stitch, slip stitch this down in place. And one of the things that you might wanna try before you do this, you're gonna have a little bit of um, fullness at the top of that curve that you're gonna have to gather in. Don't worry about that, it's just, that is what it is. But if you want, you can try to do that trick of gently curving, uh, pressing and curving and coaxing your uh, your bias strip into a gentle curve so it will follow the curve. I'm gonna do that before I sew this down, but it might not make uh, a huge difference. This is, um, this is a very long piece of bias. You might just need to, again, gather up that, that extra. So once you've done that and it's all been done, turned over and slip stitched, you're going to apply your front bindings. And these are cut on the straight, not on the bias. You're gonna do the same thing. You're going to right sides to right sides with a quarter inch or your seam allowance turned over on one long edge. You're going to seam those in place. I've got threads all over the place. You're gonna seam that together. You're going to turn that and you're going to press your seam allowance towards your seam, towards your seam binding. So imagine it's like this. Once that's done, you are going to top stitch along and not, not, and this is all going to be flat. You're not folding this over yet. You're top stitching above that seam on the bias or rather on the binding. And that creates this really nice flat, um, flat seam. You're not going through you're just keeping that seam allowance down and, and creating a nice sharp edge. And then you're neatening up your ends and you're going to sew this down with a small uh, running hem stitch, which is really charming. So I'm going to go and do that and then I'm gonna come back and show you the collar, but collar, this is just the simplest garment you could ever wanna make. The collar is basically just two pieces of uh, fabric. One is your uh, this beautiful flannel and one is this beautiful silk. You're just putting them together, um, sewing them together on all um, three sides and you're clipping your corners and making sure you turn them out well and then clipping along this curve so it turns well, pressing it on both sides and just putting it aside. And then when we come back, I will show you what we do with the collar. So I've started to sew down the bias. And then as we discussed, I sewed the straight interfacing to the front edge. I pressed the seam towards the, the interfacing and then I top stitched along that. Now, again, we're not top stitching while it's together. We're top stitching while it's flat. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to, and you can see when we put on the bias, we left a little bit of this, like um, a little overhang here uh, in terms of the wool. You see a little bit of the wool peeping out. I'm gonna do the same thing with the front where we're going to leave a little bit of that wool so you don't see the lining. It's just a really pretty um, finishing technique, very sort of wonderful that they added this to the simple garment. And might do a little bit of this just to show you. And we're going to sew this with a small running stitch. Get my knot. There we go. Hide our knot at the bottom here. I can trim that off. I'm gonna tuck that little bit in. I'm not wearing my glasses this morning. That's always a disaster. See, it's always a disaster. I don't feel it 
Let's see if I can do this really quickly. I'm not wearing my glasses. I probably won't be able to see anything. So I'm gonna use our handy dandy needle threader, which you can find in the, oops. There we go. In the boutique, which is wonderful for those of us who are getting older and our eyes might not be as sharp as they used to be. So see, it's just going to be a little bit, a little running stitch. You're catching a, a little bit on the front, a longer stitch on the back. And it's gonna just add that really pretty um, detail. And then once we're done with that, we are going to press it into a nice sharp crease and I'll get rid of that thread tail. You, know, you can sew along the bottom as well. I probably would go back and st slip stitch that closed. But then what we're gonna do, once that's done on both sides, we're gonna work with our collar. And I'm just going to do this on one side just to show you how this will work. So <laughs> I think when I was describing the cape, I got a little bit confused about which was my right and which was my wrong side. You know, it happens, but you figure it out. And if you don't, if you don't figure it out, you do it again, you take it out and do it again. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting the right side of the collar to the wrong side of the cape. And by that, I mean, we're going to be seaming it together. We're going to be finding our centers. We're going to be seaming it together. And then we're going to be flipping it. We're going to flip it over. So once you've, once you've seamed them together and you flip them over, you're going to want to have, uh, let me see, a little bit of a pinked edge there, I think, just to neaten it up. You don't have to overcast this. You can just pink it. You're gonna turn it you know, to the right side and give it a good little press. You can even steam it while it's on the doll. And then you have your beautiful cape. Just uh, again, the simple closure is a, is a hook and a metal loop at the neck closure and then you're done. So I will move on to the bonnet now and then our outfit for Croix Rouge will be complete. So we're going to make this bonnet for our nurse, Fanny or Flora. And it's a very, very, again, very simple design. It has a built-in channel for tapes to run through that will basically draw it up into this bonnet shape. And it's really just uh, two pieces and you're gonna cut two pieces of white, of this beautiful white cotton for each one of them. One is this brim and where are my pieces? Here we go. We've got this, it's basically going to be two layers and the other is this portion which I guess you would call the bonnet portion. So what we're going to start to do is we're going to sew together this piece and we're going to sew together this piece. We're leaving these straight edges we're leaving the straight edges open and we're leaving them open for turning, but we're also going to be joining them and pinking them. And this is gonna be inside, so you're never gonna see that. Um, and then what we'll do is we will, after we've done that, we'll be top stitching them, uh, and this is separately, we'll be top stitching the brim and we'll be top stitching away from the edge to create this, this little uh, channel. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to find, I visually find, you know, the center of this. And we could even just score it. And I'm going to just draw a little mark here. And these two marks basically are going to be the opening for our, our casing. So when we sew around this piece, you're going to sew, you're going to stop, and then, you know, lock your stitches here, lock your stitches here, start again, leave this open, and go all the way up. And then we're going to turn it inside out and we're basically going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to 
go and stitch these together and come back and show you the next steps to this very simple little bonnet or cap. So we have sewn our brim together and we've sewn our bonnet portion together and we've top stitched around the front of the brim, which is the curved end, and we've just closed the other end shut with uh, by top stitching. And then we've top stitched approximately a quarter of an inch around the sewn end. Remember we left this opening down here and I'm using a, a blunt large eye needle, but if you have a bodkin or something else you wanna use, that's fine. And I'm just threading that tape through here. And the idea is to come out <laughs> through that opening. So there we are. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull out just a little bit of this and I'm gonna pin it just to keep it in place. So this is basically our first drawstring. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And then when we're done with that, we're going to be joining these straight edge to straight edge. And we're gonna be pressing this down, pinking this just to clean it up, pressing this down, and then we will embroider our cross. So I will be back when I've gone through those steps, but just want to show you how you feed this through. And again, a cruel needle or a large eye blunt tip needle is perfect for this. So we've put the brim onto the bonnet and pinked the back. And I actually just top stitched that edge just to give it a little bit more structure. And now we're going to embroider our cross. I've already marked it with the Frixion. Again, this is the simplest thing in the world because it's just two straight stitches. Just make sure you've, you're happy with the size of it. And then I just like to do a little bit of a cross just to hold those two pieces together. And then because I marked this with a friction, I'm just gonna give it a little touch up, pull it a little tight. You know, you could probably bury your stitches if you wanted to, but again, this brim will not be seen uh, from the outside, so I don't think we need to necessarily worry about that. So then you're going to, you know, pull it up. I think that if you just cross these, like you were going to tie a bow, and then just start pulling, or you could pull them before you actually tie them, which is probably a better idea. It'll be much easier for you. See how nicely that just comes together? Let's do that other side. And then tighten it by creating a little loop here. There we go. And then you've got her little Red Cross bonnet. And this could be tied in a bow if you want, just to keep it um, from moving. And this can be worn over her wig if you, if you care to. Um, she doesn't have to not have her wig on because I think there's some room here. This could, this could work quite well to keep her hair in, in place. So that is the last item of this uh, Croix Rouge Red Cross um, uniform. And I hope that you enjoy this project. It's, it's really been a lot of fun. And, um, and I love that we're honoring, you know, our, our ancestors or our neighbors or, our, you know, friends and family who have served in this way. I think it's really, it's really lovely. So we've made this bonnet. Um, and there is a head covering that goes underneath this, and I'm going to show you how to make that now. 
Um, it's basically very, very simple to make. It's two pieces identical. You're going to sew them together and you're going to leave a little bit um, in the middle, which is the front, for turning. And that's the first thing we're going to do. And I'm just going to mark with my Frixion a turning point. Maybe it's like there. You know, I wonder. I guess you could also even do it up there if you wanted, because this is going to be the brim of the hat. It's going to turn back. So I will stitch this together. I finally got my featherweight to work, which I'm very happy about. Let's see how it does on this. And um, we'll be back and show you, once we have turned this inside out, what our next step is. So we've sewn this together, turned it inside out. I'm going to slip stitch the opening closed or shut. And then the way this gets put together is actually very simple. You're going to bring the side pieces in and you are going to stitch by hand on either side to create that little turnover. And that's, it's that simple. I think um, when I've done this, I'm going to come back and basically show you what this looks like under her other coiffe. So this one actually has a brim that will turn back and you'll see how this works. So here's our little coiffe. It's kind of like a, I guess something that you probably would have worn if you were going into the hospital or some other place that you work with patients, but it's really low on the forehead. And then that other little bonnet we created covers it. So that is her complete headdress. And again, um, we don't have her, uh, her wig on because it's just, it would be too bulky. Um, one thing just to let you know, as I um, ironed back this front and I basically anchored it with the cross, with, uh, anchored it with the cross. So that is our headdress. And you know, now she's ready to completely serve however she can the soldiers in the front. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button.